Uh, my name is Newton Harrison. Uh, you'll see a work composed with myself and Helen Harrison, who can't be here, but we've been collaborating for 50 years or so. Um, this is a work that's not a global warming work. It's a work that argues that global warming has to happen with, uh, and can only happen with radical changes in governance. Um, this is called Green Heart Vision. Is there anything up there? I gotta push a button. Does that do it? Yeah, okay. Um, well look, our work always has a little story behind it and this happens when a telephone rings, a Dutch voice, a Dutch voice happens and says, um, Mr. Harrison, I, uh, we hear that you do large projects. Yes, says I. Uh, we hear you work in countries. Yes, says I. What's the matter with your country? Um, it turns out that there is something the matter with the country. I, I was just being sarcastic. <laughs> and um, it turns out that Holland, which has an 800 uh, square kilometer center, was going to get 600,000 houses in a new city built in this center. And the center was a great park was a great central park. Could somebody bring a chair out for me? Um, the light's making me dizzy. Um, and it's a great central park, and they were gonna build, put a quarter of a trillion dollar economic engine in the middle of it. Thanks. And so, um, uh, they want to do something about it. And they had 10 plans and all plans failed. Uh, so uh, we flew out there and were immediately introduced to people from parliament. What makes you think you can save the green heart? We said, well, you can't. You just showed us 10, 10 important plans that say you can't. And we'll cost less than them. We're a cheap date. Uh, <laughs> the Dutch understood this. Uh, <laughs> So, um, so we immediately signed a contract. But the contract we always sign has certain properties. And the property says that if we don't like what you're doing, we're going home. If you don't like what we're doing, tell us we'll go home. Um, but our client's the green heart and not you. And this is the outcome from that work. The first thing we do is often we write a poem, a warning poem. And this is on the urgency of the moment. And it goes, looking at the map of Holland, seeing it as an expression of a moment in 1,200 years of contested history about who will command the land and why and how, seeing it as a metaphor for yet another contest as who will shape the future of this physical terrain, understood to be the Ronstadt and the Green Heart where in a 10-year moment, less than 1% of the time of its whole history as a civilization, the people on the ground must construct a response in physical terms to intense population pressure, coupled to an expansion-committed economic engine in such a way that these two self-reproducing forces, mutually energizing and interrelated, will consume much of the lands available in the green heart which do not have specific ecological or historic or other civic designation, and unless or until a new direction is set in place, an alternate consensus agreed upon by government and economic and civic institutions on limiting, on limiting growth. Well, limiting growth. That's the story of our civilization. That's the story of why our sixth extinction is upon us. And, um, so we set out to do, what would one do? Oh, you can see right here, okay. Uh, we made an installation and they stuck us in a church. A little church out of the way in Howda. Why? Well, they were putting a lot of money behind us. And if we blew it, they could hide us away. If we made it, why then they could have pilgrimages there and uh, would be complimented on their modesty. On top of that, Jesus was looking down upon us. Who could argue? <laughs> Look, the Green Heart's like this. There are about 15 villages like this. It is the, cent it's the, it's the uh, center of, of uh, about six million people in cities like Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Den Haag, and the like. 
which are called the Ramstad. Um, it is the whole history, the whole history of that, of that country. The windmills, you all know it, but it's also the history of democracy. And so if we are, if they build out the center of this, aside from wrecking Rotterdam, if they build out the center of it, we extract, that build out extracts their whole history. So, after writing them a warning and making this installation, which I'll go back to in a second, um, the one on your left is called Bad Government. Uh, we'll get to it. Um, it's like this. We made a nine-foot square map of Holland, printed it backwards, and put a couple hundred thousand houses on it, cutting a, the darker drawings of the houses we put in. They split the green heart into three parts, and then would, would start to join with one another. So, um, the planners, some of them like this plan, uh, we were horrified. Well, uh, incidentally, you must know that Holland is a planning country, has a planner per square kilometer. So we had a bunch of really pissed off planners when we did this because they said, why did you print our country backwards? Well, we said, you're designing it backwards. <laughs> the nice thing about the, uh, being an artist like this is we don't have to um, be polite. We don't. <laughs> And we also don't have to do something else. We don't have to be careful. Normal planners wouldn't ever say this. Um, uh, but the Dutch, they got it, okay? They said, all right, if this is wrong, if this is backwards, what's forward? So um, we make them this one, a, a, ma a parallel map and work. And, uh, You'll see the green circle in there. That's called a biodiversity ring. And we say, if you put a biodiversity ring around, do I only have two minutes left? <laughs> if you put a biodiversity ring around the center um, and you put parks between the cities, you will have the following will be the outcome. A um, uh, Cultural diversity will be preserved by, by bounding the cities. Biodiversity will be served by, continue, by, by continuous association of, wild, of, of, of wilderness. And your planning has to take the place as yin-yang. If you do one part, you have to see its impact on another. These were all accepted. This is an engineering drawing which shows the height of each field and what this would let happen is um, a, a, an engineering team could easily do this work from it. We're not engineers. So anyway, the Dutch are getting more irritated with this. Um, they say, well, where are the houses? Um, and so we said, well, in the uh, biodiversity ring, we changed the subject. Uh, look at all that's gonna grow. <laughs> and um, they say, that's very nice. Um, but um, where are you gonna put the houses? So we have an inspiration. They, the Dutch were really nice. They gave us a team and a lot of room to work. And uh, this is a drawing, our drawing of the Green Heart, shows you little villages. And we sent, we had an inspired landscape architect student who didn't know things were impossible. We said, go, go out for a couple of weeks, we'll give you an unlimited budget. Find where you can put a 600,000 houses outside of the Green Heart and come back with a drawing. So off she goes. A week and a half pass, uh, almost finished. A week passes, she comes back with this. So we show it to the Dutch, and, uh, th and this is what, what happens, and it's accepted. Um, this is what's saved. Uh, this is also what's saved. Uh, this is uh, where you would build all the houses. The poorest people would uh, have the best places um, who came in late. It's chosen as a, um, a center, uh, one of the important centers for a sustainable open space. Um, we were kicked out but it, because a right-wing government came in. Five years later, we were brought back because they kicked out the right-wing government. And this was, so I mean, what I'm telling you is, 16 seconds, this 10-minute stuff is shit. Um, um, so, uh, so at any rate, so at any rate, 
we're uh, handed the Grunewald Prize for uh, doing the most for Holland. And why have we done this when it's supposed to be about global warming? Well, what we, all our work tomorrow when we talk will be about what we call the force majeure and the giant forces upon us. And this is an 800 square kilometer success. And it isn't successful enough by far. And it's patch thinking. And that's the way we're starting to solve all our problems. And we got it backwards because we've got to involve ourselves in systemic thinking. And that's what you'll hear and see tomorrow when we do that. I'm only a half a minute over. <laughs>